This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1387, the five-step negotiation process I use to lower my monthly bills by 25% by Tyler Tervorin of Riskology.co. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Happy Saturday and happy Kwanzaa if you're celebrating. This is the show where I read to you from the best personal finance blogs on the web, with the author's permission, of course. And if you're looking for some financially minded friends, check out the Facebook group I run called For the Fi Curious. This is a joint group between Optimal Finance Daily and the Economy Conference, which is an event I produce. In this group, we aim to inspire you on your path to financial independence. And I'm also posting some of the questions that come into this show so that the group can weigh in with more varied perspectives. Just search for Optimal Finance Daily and you'll quickly find the Facebook group called For the Fi Curious. Today, I have a post from Tyler of Riskology. So let's get right to his post as we optimize your life. The five-step negotiation process I use to lower my monthly bills by 25% by Tyler Tervorin of Riskology.co. Anyone who tells you something is non-negotiable is in fact using that as a negotiation strategy themselves. Those of us familiar with haggling know the truth. Everything is negotiable. Where I am in the U.S., negotiation is typically reserved for used cars and flea markets. It's not customary to question the price of something that doesn't fit in those categories. This means people who sell things in my part of the world are at a huge advantage. You can set your price at whatever you want and most won't argue. What if it wasn't like that? What if you had the power? What if you decided how much your phone or internet bill is? These are the things you pay for every month. Over time, they add up to tremendous amounts. What if you could cut those bills by 20% or more just by learning a bit of negotiation psychology? I tried my hand at this last year and recruited a few friends to do the same. We all lowered our bills or received improved service, and it took us all 10 minutes or less. Here's a brief rundown of everything you need to know to learn the psychology of negotiation and get big companies to let you decide what you're going to pay. How to negotiate your monthly bills. Last year, I teamed up with a Portland news station, KATU, to test the major principles of negotiation on big companies like Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, and others we all tend to pay a lot of money to. The questions we wanted to answer were, number one, do the principles of negotiation still work when little customers like us try to strike deals with enormous corporations? Number two, can anyone do it? Number three, if so, how much work does it take to get a decent deal? I recruited a few friends, prepared some tips for what to say and how to respond when they spoke to a representative, and we set to work. After a quick bout of verbal kung fu, my friend Kia was able to lower her internet bill by $15 a month. Another acquaintance, Heather, doubled the mobile data her provider was offering without paying extra. As for me, a leisurely web chat resulted in a 25% savings on my home internet bill. The results were exciting, but hardly surprising. When you know the fundamental principles of negotiation, and it doesn't take much work to put them to use, you can get a better deal on anything. Here are the five principles you can use, starting now, to lower your monthly bills. Principle one. Speak in a friendly, assertive voice, no matter what happens. When you start negotiating with someone, no matter who they are, the goal is to get what you want. That's easier to do when the other person likes you. Your friendly, assertive voice is the one that's always calm and courteous, but never gives in. Compare it to how a mother would deal with a toddler having a meltdown in a store. I know you're very upset because you can't have the dinosaur toy. I still love you. Also, you still can't have it. You won't deal with hostility like that when you're talking to a customer service rep. At least let's hope not. But remembering this can help guide you when you feel like reaching through the phone and throat punching the guy on the other side. Principle two, ask for more than you want, then slowly back down. 
One of the keys to successful negotiation is to make it seem like you're on a team finding a solution together. One way to do this is to give in here and there. When you give in, the other person feels more comfortable doing it too. But you still want to get the deal you need, so it's important to start by asking for more than you want so you'll have room to move down. This brings the other person to your side without giving up what you actually want. Principle three, only negotiate with someone who has the power to do so. When you call customer service, you'll usually talk to a first line representative who has no authority to negotiate at all. This is a strategy they use. The first line rep will tell you how sorry they are and how they understood your position, but that they can't do anything about it. Don't give up when this happens. Instead, ask to speak with someone who can help you with your request. There is always someone who can, but they may be one or two transfers away. If you feel like you aren't getting anywhere, there are two things you can do. Number one, hang up and call again. Big companies have lots of agents. If you try a few times, you'll get someone willing to help you. Number two, ask to cancel your service. You won't actually do it, but this will always get you to someone who can negotiate. Big companies have whole departments dedicated to keeping you from canceling. They know it's more expensive to get a new customer than it is to keep you. So the person from this department will almost always have authority to make billing exceptions for customers. Principle four, always have a backup solution. Sometimes you just won't get anywhere when you're negotiating over price. For one reason or another, it'll become clear that lowering your bills simply won't be an option. This might be the case if you're already on one of the lowest tiers of service and they know you're already not making the company much money to begin with. When this happens, you can do what Heather did with her cell provider and negotiate for better service at the same price tier. The more solutions you propose in any negotiation, the more likely it is you'll find something the other side will be more willing to negotiate on. When you find those, focus in. Principle five, know when to stop. There's nothing worse than a negotiation that never ends. To leave both sides feeling good, you want to come to an agreement quickly. To know when to stop, though, you have to go into your negotiation knowing what the least you'll accept is. Before you get on the phone, ask yourself, what's the lowest I'm willing to go and still be happy? When you know that number, you can skip a lot of frustration and confusion. You'll know quickly if you're never going to get there and you can adjust if you want. Or you'll know when you're close enough to what you want that you can call it a deal and be on your way. Knowing what you'll accept before you start is key to getting what you want and keeping a negotiation from dragging on. The best deals go to those who ask for them. Just like anything in life, it's rare to be good at negotiation if you don't practice it. It's not complicated or difficult to learn the basics of negotiation psychology. What is difficult is getting yourself to put it to use when you're not used to it. Whether you feel like you're not skilled at it or you're just uncomfortable asking for a better deal, remember that life is for the taking. You won't get anything you don't ask for. Talking to a representative on the phone or even chatting online is one of the best opportunities to start practicing and improving your skill. Take 10 minutes and try it out today. It could save you tens of thousands of dollars. You just listened to the post titled The Five-Step Negotiation Process I Use to Lower My Monthly Bills by 25% by Tyler Tervoren of Riskology.co. As someone who negotiates contracts for a living, I can tell you that this is all great advice. I think another thing that's really key for negotiation is to be willing to walk away. It doesn't apply to every negotiation. You definitely need to understand when you have leverage and when you don't. But if you can demonstrate in a friendly tone that you can easily get what you need elsewhere, you're more likely to get them on your side. So for example, if you're trying to lower your internet bill, do a little research and know what their competitor's introductory offer is. When you call, you can say something like, I'm planning to cancel my service to take advantage of this great rate from XYZ company, but I wanted to see if you were first able to match that before I move forward. Another thing that has worked in the past for me when you're not getting a good response from a customer service rep is to reach out to the company via social media. Often social media for major corporations are run by external agencies that have budgets for appeasing disappointed customers. 
it's much more costly for them PR-wise if you write them a bad review. Finally, I just wanted to reiterate the point about hanging up and trying again with a different representative. I've always found it interesting how the company policy changes with every rep you talk to. If you keep calling, you'll likely find someone who can help you. And that will do it for today. Have a great day and weekend, a happy Kwanzaa if you're celebrating, and I'll be back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.